want to start our work now with arithmetic with uh, negative numbers. And over here on the board, we're going to do a little addition with some positive and negative numbers. We're going to do this addition on the number line so that we can develop a rule for adding positive and negative numbers. Then once we have the rule, we won't use the number line anymore. But let's take a look at our first problem. Here I want to add 2 plus 3 on this number line. So what I do is I always start at the origin, and then I move two units in the positive direction because that is positive 2. So I start at the origin, and I move one, two units in the positive direction. That brings me to here. The plus sign means, and then move another three units in the positive direction, because this is a positive three. So another one, two, three units in the positive direction. The place where I end up, the number I end up at, is the answer to this problem. And so that is why, on the number line, two plus three is equal to five. So we already knew that 2 plus 3 was equal to 5, but I just want to show you that by using this number line, we get answers that are consistent with the answers we already know are correct. Here's our next problem. We can use the same idea to add negative 2 and 3 on the number line. I always start at the origin, so that's at 0, and I move 2 units in the negative direction. So I start here and move 1, 2 units in the negative direction. That means that I end up right here. And then I want to move three units in the positive direction. So from here, I move three units, one, two, three units in the positive direction. The place where I end up is the answer to this problem, which is positive one. So the reason why negative two plus three is positive one is because of this movement on the number line. I start at the origin, two units in the negative direction, and then three units in the positive direction. The place I end up is one, and so that's the answer to negative 2 plus 3. So you can see now, you can sort of visualize what's going to happen with our other combinations. I want to add now 2 plus negative 3, and so I'm going to use the same idea. I'll start here at the origin. Let's work underneath. Move two units in the positive direction. So I move one, two units in the positive direction. That brings me right to here. And then I want to move three units in the negative direction. So from here, I'm going to go back one, two, three. That brings me to this number right here, negative 1, and that's why 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1, because of this movement on the number line. Start at the origin, move 2 units in the positive direction, and then 3 units in the negative direction, we end up at negative 1, and that's the answer to this problem. So where do you think negative 2 plus negative 3 is going to end up? You're right, at negative 5. So here's the origin where I start. I move 2 units in the negative direction. So there's 1, 2. That brings me to this point. And then I want to move three more units in the negative direction. So one, two, three more units in the negative direction. Sure enough, I end up at negative five. And that's why the answer to negative two plus negative three is negative five. Now, if we were to do a whole bunch of problems like this on the number line, what you would see is that they followed a certain pattern. That pattern I've summarized over here with the rule for adding positive and negative numbers. And we say this, to add two numbers with A, the same sign, we simply add their absolute values. That means forget about the sign part of the number, just add the number parts, the absolute value, and use the common sign. If both numbers were positive, the answer is positive. If both numbers were negative, the answer is negative. So, for instance, 3 plus 5 is 8. I just add 3 and 5. They're both positive, so the answer is positive 8. When I add negative 3 plus negative 5, two numbers with the same sign, I simply add their absolute values, 3 plus 5 is 8, and I use that common sign, negative. So negative 3 plus negative 5 is negative 8. And of course, you can visualize this on the number line if you want to. Then, if the two numbers have different signs, we subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger absolute value, and we use the sign that's in front of the number with larger absolute value. So here's two numbers that I'm adding that have different signs, a negative 3 and a positive 5. They have different signs, so I subtract absolute values. That gives me 2. The number with larger absolute value is positive 5, so the answer is positive. Likewise, if I add 3 and negative 5, two numbers with different signs, subtract absolute value, the answer is 2. The number with the larger absolute value happens to be negative, so that's the sign of my answer. Now, it turns out in all these additions right here, if you just look at the number with the larger absolute value, the answer always has the same sign that it does. So when you add two numbers at a time, whichever number has the larger absolute value, that sign in front of that number is the same as the sign of the answer. 
So we use the number line to uh, find out how to add positive and negative numbers. From there, if we were to do a lot more problems, we would be able to generalize the results into this rule for adding positive and negative numbers. Now what you want to do is memorize this rule and work enough problems so that you operate according to this rule. That is, when you see negative 3 plus negative 5, you automatically write down negative 8. You want to get to the point where you don't even have to think about it. When you add 3 and negative 5, you know the answer is going to be negative 2. Again, you don't even think about it. So that part of it is up to you. You have to work enough problems so that is what happens. And you'll see that, that adding positive and negative numbers is something we're going to carry through for the rest of the course. Now, what we want to do is uh, go to the board and work a few more problems. So here we go. So problem number five, we have seven plus eight, two numbers with the same sign. So I add absolute value and get 15. They're both positive, so the answer is positive. Problem six, negative six plus negative five, two numbers with the same sign. So again, I add absolute values. Six plus five is 11. And the common sign is negative, so the answer has that sign. Next problem, negative 10 plus 3, two numbers with different signs. This is negative 10 plus positive 3. There's no sign showing with the th this 3. It's assumed to be positive 3. So I subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger. 10 minus 3 is 7. And I use the sign of the number with larger absolute value, negative. So you can see what I'm doing now is not thinking about the number line. I'm just applying this rule the way that I have it written. If the two numbers have the same sign, we simply add absolute values and use the common sign. If the numbers have different signs, we subtract the smaller from the larger absolute value and use the sign of the larger absolute value. Our next problem, 4 plus negative 12. Again, two numbers with different signs, a positive 4 and a negative 12. This is the addition sign right here. I subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger, 12 minus 4 is 8, and I use the sign of the number with larger absolute value, negative. Here I have three numbers to add, so I just do them two at a time. Negative 2 plus 4, when I add these two together, I get 2 plus negative 6, and then 2 plus negative 6 will be negative 4. Because these two numbers have different signs, so I subtract absolute values, I get 4, the sign of the large number with larger absolute value is negative, so my answer is negative. Now, when you get problems that require more than one step like this, remember our study skill from the last chapter. You want to imitate success. Make your work look like this work. Each line that you want to write down should be a complete line. Here's our next problem. Negative 201 plus negative 143 plus negative 101. So I'm going to add negative 201 and negative 143, same sign, so I add absolute values, and I get 4, 4, 3, Common sign is negative, so I use a negative sign. Now, we're going to add these two numbers. They have the same sign, so I add absolute values. I get 4, oh, whoops, take that back, 4, 45. The common sign is negative, so the answer is negative. So I end up there with negative 445 for the answer to that problem. Here I have problems in parentheses or numbers in parentheses. I'll simplify inside each set of parentheses first. Negative 8 plus 5, negative 3, plus negative 6 plus 2, negative 4. I add negative 3 and negative 4, and I end up with negative 7. So again, I'm applying my rule for adding two numbers at a time. Remember that we can only add two numbers at a time. If I have three numbers or more, I can just add two of them, and then to what I get, I add the third one. Let's look at the last problem here. I have parentheses, 20 plus negative 30 plus 50, that quantity, plus 10. So let's simplify inside the parentheses first. Negative 30 plus 50, 20, plus 10. 20 and 20 is 40, and 10 is 50. So this comes out to be 50, and I simply add inside the parentheses first. I get that 20, and then I add to the other 20, and that 10. Let's go to the other board now and look at a problem that involves some words. Kind of a puzzle, you might say. What number do you add to 8 to get 3? So if I write this out, 8 plus what number is going to give me 3? So 8 plus some number ends up to be 3. Now you have to sort of use your intuition, or not your intuition, but your experience working with positive and negative numbers to see that the number I'm going to add to 8 to end up with just 3 must be negative 5. 
8 plus negative 5 is equal to 3. So I set the problem up with parentheses, and then I just think about it for a while and get the number that goes in there. Let's try another one of these. What number do we add to negative 3 to get negative 7? So here's negative 3 plus some number comes out to be negative 7. Think about this for a while, and you'll see that the only number that you can add to negative 3 to end up with negative 7 is the number negative 4. So you'll be able to work these problems here after you've gained a lot of experience just adding positive and negative numbers two at a time. What we're going to cover next will be subtraction of positive and negative numbers.